What's poppin and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman guys and today as promised in the last video we're doing a little bit of pond hopping out here at some of my favorite ponds. I wish I was doing it in Charlotte like I told y'all but I tried to do that guys and it was just rainy, windy, all that bad stuff and I actually did catch some fish but you know it just didn't come together how I wanted to when I went back and looked at the footage so I ended up just kind of scrapping that but I had to come back down south for some collabs this week planning on doing some collabs with Kicking Their Bass TV, Larry Mellon and possibly some other guys so be on the lookout for those videos later this week which I'm really excited for. If you've been on the channel for a while you've probably seen me fish a few of these ponds at one point or another but I'm really excited to get out here I haven't fished a few of them in a while last time I fished this one specifically caught like a nice five pounder over there in that corner so there's a lot of potential to catch some nice juicy fish in today's episode but I have a bunch of stuff rigged up over here I got four rods and a handful of baits that I want to kind of get into in a second so let me go ahead and strap the GoPro on and show y'all exactly what we're gonna be using today uh, let's see, where do we even start, guys? I have four different baits rigged up right now. I actually went to Cabela's the other day to pick up a little bit more soft plastics and stuff that I was running low on. So let me show y'all exactly what I got to kind of work with today. That bag's empty over there. Got some nice power bait Maxent stick baits, and these are called the General, and they're in five inch, and I got them in two colors. We got the black and blue flick, and we got the green pumpkin. And if y'all don't know about power bait, power bait is basically like a flavor infused into the soft plastic itself which basically makes the fish hold on to it longer because it tastes like something that they would actually eat and then on top of that this one has the maxent so that's the purple bag right here this power bait maxent and the maxent is like an odor that basically attracts the fish into actually biting it in the first place so these are great baits to try if you haven't tried them before and you know you just can't go wrong with stick baits wacky rig texas rig it's a pond fish machine so definitely make sure to check those out if you haven't and then on top of that we have not that i have this before i've shown you all those in the past but these are new the critter hogs the watermelon red also power bait maxin i have those and then i have another pack of them in my pocket which i actually have rigged on my rod right here and that is the same thing but in the sapphire blue so i'm excited to give those a shot i think the fish should eat them up pretty good and then on top of that i also have a nice little swim bait right here just on a half ounce jig head and then on top of that we got that little buzzing speed toad right here on the frog hook and then i got my little wacky rig set up right here on the spinning rod but i think i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can't get a bite or two with this little toad to start i only have one of these guys i kind of ran through all of them because the fish have been just straight up annihilating them so <laughs> i probably need to re-up on them but i think i'm gonna go ahead and get started with it until it breaks and see if i can't get a fish maybe the first cast we're gonna just have to see what happens nothing on the frog yet i'm gonna go ahead and switch over to that little paddle tail see if i can't get something started with that before i move on to the next spot in this pond there we go i'm gonna really try slowing this one down i think these fish are gonna be a lethargic for me today just let this thing sink all the way down to the bottom it's probably about four or five feet right where i cast it all the way back and just slowly wind this thing back on the bottom. Is that a fish? No, I think I'm snagged. Wonderful. Starting the day off hot. Nice little snag. I don't think that's coming off. It's like really in there. Yeah, that's good. It has to be popped. <sighs> I guess I'll have to put another one of those on in a minute. Not gonna lie guys, the bite has been pretty tough so far. I've been fishing for, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, an hour, and not a single nibble. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this wacky rig. The, uh, wacky rig, there we go. <laughs> These fish seem to be really, really finicky. This is a super subtle presentation. So hopefully I can get a fish to bite this thing. Yeah, yeah, that fish came flying out of the pipe right there. That's a really good fish, guys. 
That's a really good one. Oh my gosh, that's like a five pounder. That's like a five pounder. Hammered that thing, maybe not five pounds, probably like four something. But holy smokes, guys. He came flying out that pipe to hammer that thing. That is a really good fish. Holy smokes. <laughs> He annihilated that thing. I think I found the, the ticket, guys. Oh, don't go back in that pipe. Wacky rig is the move today. Yes. Come here. Oh, I don't really have a good way to get to him. Um, hold up, guys. Hold up. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. No. He came off. He came off. He came off. He came off. Yes. I didn't move. He didn't move. Holy smokes, guys. I can't believe I just managed to get that fish. He just literally popped off right there at the bank and he sat there for me to pick him up. Oh, yes. I don't think he's five, but he's probably every bit of four. Let's get him on the scale. Well, the scale is not working. I really need to get a functioning scale, but the head fish is probably about I'd say four and a half to five pounds. Looks really similar to the last fish I caught there. That was five pounds, if I'm gonna be honest. I doubt it's the same one, but goodness gracious, that is a great way to start the day, especially after a slow start. Here's a better look at that beautiful beast, guys. I'm super ecstatic to finally get this one on the hook today, as you can probably tell by my excitement, but like, Wow, I, I can't believe that fish didn't swim off the second it came off the hook. She just kind of chilled right there. I felt like she like thought she was like done for. I don't really know what she was thinking, but she didn't move for a good like 10 seconds. Let me grab her and let me go ahead and stick this one back in, man. That is so exciting. I want to get her back in as soon as possible. So let me try to get her back really quick. Here we go, baby. Oh yeah, she's ready. There she goes right back into that pipe i bet let's see yep she turned right in there that's exactly where she's going <laughs> oh goodness guys that is awesome i need to grab my rod right here and see if i can't rig myself back up another wacky rig i think i lost my hook or no not my hook my worm i did let's go ahead and go back over here and get another one on let's go considering that fish took my little wacky rig this is a great time to show y'all exactly how i rig these things up I have this little tool right here, and these things are called wacky rig tools. You can find them at most places you can find like fishing lures, so like online retailers, main retailers, things like that. But basically, it's just this little tube that has a slot to put your worm in right there, and then it has these little rubber bands that you can stick on the back. And basically, what this allows you to do versus putting that hook straight into the worm is it allows you to get a little bit more use out of your worm because it's a lot less likely to fall off. I know this isn't a bad example because that fish literally took my worm on the first try right there, but that was a big boy. So, you know, he's got a little extra power to swing this thing right off there. But then you just take your hook and you stick it right through the rubber band instead of the soft plastic bait itself. That just keeps it from ripping and all that. And that thing is now rigged and ready to go. So hopefully this thing lasts a little bit longer, but I mean, if I keep catching hogs, that's okay. I'll lose a worm for every hog that I catch. Won't complain. Let's see if anyone else is home. I go right back to this pipe. Let it sink right there in front of it. Oh, I just saw a flash. I just saw a flash. From a, I think it was a bass right there on this bush. Hold up, hold up. Nothing there. Let me give it a little bit farther of a heave get down this little bank line. No luck there. Let me swing it back out there a little bit farther down this bank line. And guys, when you're fishing a wacky rig, nine out of 10 times, these fish are gonna bite on that initial fall. It's just a really, really, really subtle fall. And it's just super tempting for these fish to eat. So what you wanna do is target like really specific places like a dock, a bush, a pipe, something like that, where it's like there's a high chance of there being a fish. Let it fall all the way down to the bottom once, wiggle it a little bit when it's there on the bottom. And then you can also give it like a quick little pop after you're wiggling it. Maybe do like that two or three times at max. And basically what that's gonna do is like if a fish is like interested and nose down on that bait, ripping it up off the bottom really quick and trigger that reaction bite if they're not just gonna pick it up on their own. So definitely give that a shot. I've caught quite a few fish triggering them like that. 
But after that, just reel it back in and give yourself another cast to another very specific spot. Because like I said, guys, nine out of 10 times, it's gonna come on that initial fall. Might as well try the pipe one more time. Oh, got him. Oh no, I, <laughs> I lost my rod right there. I lost my rod. Oh, and the rod came literally out of my hand and I missed that fish. That hook didn't get a chance to like penetrate that fish's mouth because it just like, I just wasn't gripping the rod strong enough. And that was another good one, guys. That was probably like a three or four pounder. Mm. That's frustrating. This pipe is loaded right here. Oh, I just got bit again and just launched my freaking worm to the moon. Land it somewhere back here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that. I just slung it literally to the freaking Mars. Elon Musk, that worm. Where is she at? I might have to go find a new one. It went somewhere way back here. Yeah, I don't see it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back over to the cart to get me another one. So far, I have not showing a good example of how much better these little rings are than actually hooking it through the worm. I promise you guys, like this conserves the worms a lot more than what it appears right now. This is usually not the typical occurrence of these worms coming off. I usually can catch like five or six fish on these sometimes more without them coming off. But I guess we're gonna try the pipe again. It's, that's three bites right there. I can't imagine I'll get another bite. I'll be super shocked if I do. There we go. Got him. Got him that time. <laughs> Always lost my rod again. You think I would have a better grip with almost losing it a second ago, but this pipe is absolutely loaded. That's a good little fish right there. And this is a good example of me not actually losing the worm. That fish is hooked right where he's supposed to be, top of the mouth. And then as you can see, the line is just threaded right through that little thing right there, that little ring, and is holding my bait on there tight. So let me go ahead and put this little dinky guy, oh, that wasn't graceful at all, but he got back in the water. So I guess I did, I guess it did the trick. <laughs> now there can't possibly be another fish in this pipe. I'm sure that little fish might have hit on that one that I missed the third time. But if I get a fifth bite right in front of the same pipe, I will be shocked. I'm sure if I like left it alone for a while, I could probably get another one out of here. Might have to come back later in the video to see if that is the case, but still to get four bites out of the same pipe, they're just piled up in that thing. No more luck on this wacky right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try my little swim bait one more time over here, down this little tree line, see if I can't pick up one fish. That would be nice. These fish definitely seem to be tucked up tight against cover, just judging by how many fish were up in that pipe. It's a pretty good indication of how these fish are gonna behave today. It's gonna be one of those days where you really gotta make tight, accurate cast into hard spots. I mean, unless you have something like this where it's not super hard to get in front of it, where they're just like tucked up in there. Is that a fish? No, that's a stick. But, you know, I might go ahead and switch ponds really quick, just judging off of that, because there isn't really any good places where I can cast from the bank in here to get like really tied up in the trees. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do to get a few bites. So let me go ahead and switch ponds. Pond number two, we got this little dock right here. This is what I wanted to try kind of cast right up next to this thing. If these fish are holding up tight, there's a good chance there could be a fish right up on this dock. and drag this thing right there to the edge. Snag. Oh, oh, I had one. Shoot. 
dang i thought i like might have one but i thought it was it was on a stick but it was definitely a fish right there i did not set the hook hard enough and he took my freaking worm <laughs> shoot no exaggeration this is literally the worst example <laughs> ever of how <laughs> how good these rings actually are of preserving your baits for a few more fish i'm losing them left and right uh <laughs> it's just funny you know you try to like talk and be informative about something and it's just literally the exact opposite of what you say while you're fishing <laughs> just works out that way sometimes There we go, ha <laughs> little dinker. Get on in here, Junior, just a squeaker. We're getting smaller, you know. You start out hot with a big one, and then sometimes the day just seems to go on where you catch a few small guys after that, but I'm sure we could probably get at least another decent one or two, but I'll take the little small bites as well. Oh, gosh, I have literally the biggest butterfingers today promise i'm not meaning to drop these fish there he goes <laughs> but sheesh man i got the butterfingers today i almost dropped my rod on the hook set dropped two fish i mean i need to get it together made my way over to this little bridge i feel like i should be able to get one off of this thing let me zing it back there in that corner oh slurped me off slurped my worm off so I have a theory as to why my rings aren't working as good for me today as I thought they would and normally should. So I'm actually gonna put it through the worm itself and see how that does. But the reason I think these rings aren't working super well for me today is because I actually just ordered some new ones and they come in a few different sizes and I think I ordered the wrong size. I think these rings are just a little too big for these worms. I think they just need to be a little smaller diameter and snug that thing a little bit tighter, but actually, I need to retie this real quick. Let me give this a little snip. My thing's frayed a good bit right there. Don't want to lose a fish. Due to that, already lost enough as is today. Looks like it's nice and secure. So let's go ahead and get back on this bridge, see if we can't get another little bite over here. There we go. Haha. <laughs> yes. Got him that time and got my worm. Thank goodness. Another little squeaker though. Looked like a little bit better fish than this. And he just slung my worm. And of course it fell, <laughs> fell through the crack on the oh no, just kidding. It's over there. I thought it fell through the crack on the not the dock, but the bridge right here. <laughs> uh, so I should be able to get at least one more use out of that, hopefully. But just a little squeak. Shoo. But this rip right here is a prime example of why I don't actually like to hook it through the worm and use those rings instead. Like I said, I just need to get some rings that are a smaller diameter because those were the wrong size. But right here, when it does rip like this, if you do happen to hook through the bait itself instead of the actual ring, if you want to try to make some more use out of this, because like right here, like obviously there's not a great place to hook this thing. So what I do when this happens is I actually kind of like try to repair the little uh, rip right here, almost like a stitch with my hook and kind of rig it like that. Just kind of put some more structure back into that worm itself. And I can usually get at least one more fish re-rigging it like that. So let's go ahead and get back to it. See if I can get another one. Yeah, you know, it probably would have lasted for another fish if I didn't get stuck on the stinking tree right here. Gosh, dang it. And we have successfully gone through an entire pack of stick baits. We're on our last one. Woohoo! Use all the black and blues up. That's okay. Hopefully we can get another fish or two out of this one. Like maybe this one's just like the magic worm and I get like 20 fish on it somehow, some way. Doubt that's gonna happen, but you know, one can hope. One can dream. There we go. Another squeak. 
another squeak. Get them on up here while my worm's still on the line. I think we're gonna get at least two uses out of this thing. Like I said, they keep getting smaller. Just like a little six ouncer right there. I know I can do better than that. Another wacky rig tip, if you're rigging without the rings, like usually after catching just one fish on there, like you'll notice like the hole is not totally ripped through, but it's like nice and spacious in there, which I don't like. So what I'll do is I'll actually pull it out of that initial hole and then hook it in like literally the opposite side of the worm. So it goes nice and through a fresh hole right there and it's nice and snug once again. You know, we're just gonna throw as many little bonus tips in there as I can today. I know y'all are seeming to like those, so I'm gonna try to include as much of those. I uh, much as uh, I can't talk, can't fish, can't do anything as <laughs> as many of those as I can in my videos. There we go. That's what I was looking for. There we go, ha <laughs> ha, another one. Another little squeaker, man. There's a lot of squeaks in this pond. I might have to switch ponds because the squeaks are out of control in here. Another worm gone, just bleeding money over here. Don't mind me, you know, just plowing through a bunch of worms, but you know, we're catching fish. So, you know, that's what I spend it for is to catch fish. So I'm okay with that. But you know, it'd be nice to get two or three fish out of one worm every now and then. That would, that'd be pretty nice. Oh no, don't get snagged, no! Oh my God, I skipped it right over the limb. <laughs> so one thing I don't like about bank fishing is if you snag on a tree, there's really no way to go get it unless you wanna go get it on the water. And there it goes are like third or fourth snap off of the day. <laughs> oh, gotta love it. Got to love it. I've left the pipe alone for a few hours now. Decided to come back before I call it a day. This seemed to be the best spot and they seem to be up in it. So I'm gonna try it one more time. See if we can get another nice one to end the day on. There we go. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Look at that. A few casts and the little butt taps finally got him to commit on that thing. That's another good fish right there. Second one, or second best one of the day for sure. Probably about two and a half pounder. We're gonna go ahead and flip them on up here. Look at that, baby. Oh, I think it might be bigger than two and a half. I think it might be more like a three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that one's, that one's pushing three. That's a really fat two, if she ain't three. Just kind of short, but just chunky, man. Just a thick freaking fish. Look at the stomach on that gal. But hey, I'll take that. One more out of the pipe to end the day on, and I cannot complain. Let's go ahead and put this beautiful girl right back on in. Well, that was a fun morning of bass fishing, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. But before I go, I wanna go ahead and give away a few packs of those worms that I was using in today's video, those wacky rig ones, and that is the Powerbait Maxence General Worm. So if you want a chance at winning that, just make sure you're one, subscribe, two, like the video, and three, just leave me a comment down below letting me know what your favorite bass fishing lure is. I'm just kinda curious as to what kind of lures y'all are actually using out on your own fishing adventures. But as always, bassing is a passion. Peace.